So now we're going to start by taking a tour through a bunch of different types of isomers, going by tougher and tougher versions of what it means to be isomers. We start with the constitutional or structural isomer. Now isomers by definition are two structures with the same molecular formula but difference in bond connectivity or three-dimensional space occupation. We start with the constitutional, also known as structural isomer, as they differ in their bond connectivity. Now you're going to see me talking about organic molecules like you're building something with Lego a lot as you work through this section. So I want you to think about a constitutional isomer as if you've been handed two Ziploc baggies with different Lego pieces in them. And the constitutional isomer is as if you've just assembled them in different ways. So you could have a lot of different versions. I've got some examples shown below. Now you'll notice here that we can have versions with just hydrocarbons with C6H14 being shown a variety of ways. What changes here really is branching. And as you'll remember from our section on intermolecular forces, branching can affect things like melting point and boiling point. Importantly in organic chemistry, as we start to introduce heteroatoms, we can also affect the type of functional groups present. Here we have a ketone, here we have an aldehyde, and here we have an ether. All of these have the same molecular formula. All of them contain a single oxygen atom, and yet they are all different functional groups. And this is entirely because of constitutional or structural isomerism. Now there's one last important connection with constitutional isomers to spectroscopy called the hydrogen deficiency index. Let's take a look. So the hydrogen deficiency index or the index of hydrogen deficiency, sometimes called double bond equivalence or DBE. Unfortunately, there's about four different ways to name this. All of it is connected to a calculation to determine how many degrees of unsaturation are in a molecule. Remember that unsaturation is multiple bonds or rings. A degree of unsaturation can be a double bond, which uses up one, a triple bond, which uses up two, or a ring which uses up one. A saturated alkene has a general formula of CnH2n plus two, where n here is going to be an integer. If this is not the molecular formula, that's gonna mean that we have an element of unsaturation. Now the good news is it's a pretty quick calculation in order to work this out. To calculate this, we use this index of hydrogen deficiency calculation, where you have two times the number of carbons plus two plus the number of nitrogens minus the number of hydrogens minus the number of halogens. Remembering that X here means a halogen, where the halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. All of this is divided by the number two here. So two times carbon plus two plus nitrogens minus hydrogens minus halogens. You'll notice that oxygen does not factor into this formula. Watch out for that trap. That's a really common mistake students will want to make. When you're drawing a molecule then, you want to be able to assess the index of hydrogen deficiency to determine what degrees of unsaturation you have. Should you be incorporating a double bond or a ring? Should you be thinking about triple bonds? And then you want to draw all the possible chain lengths and look at branching sites. With constitutional isomers, you can end up with a lot of versions of the same molecule. A really good self-check is to always come back and double check your degrees of unsaturation or your hydrogen deficiency index to see whether or not you're following the right structure. So constitutional isomers are our first type of isomer, and they are those which have the same molecular formula but different bond connectivity. We also introduced the concept of the hydrogen deficiency index and the calculation for it.